Okay, I call the meeting to order at uh, 22 of 6. And what's Tuesday? What's the date today? It's September, the 7th. September 7th. Okay, oh, there it is right there. Um, okay, roll call. Anybody want to say present? Well, Leslie's the only one absent. Okay, Leslie's the only one absent. Um, adjustment to agenda. I don't know what Leslie might have had in mind, so we'll skip that, I guess, um, with everybody's approval. Um, the minutes for the August meeting, everybody's gotten them. Do we want to read them? We've, we just need to vote on them if we've read them already. Okay, yeah, I've read them. Seems reasonable to me. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I don't see anything wrong with them, so okay. um, I make a motion that we accept the minutes. Is that your second? Mm -hmm. All second. in favor? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, public input. Um, there's no public here. There's no public here. <laughs> Although, technically, we do have some public input from the um, survey. Right. Yeah. Which takes us to item four, old business, naming of the rest area by Hannaford. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I guess the survey was posted on the 21st and immediately got a lot of votes. Mm -hmm. And as of yesterday, the number one choice by a mile mm -hmm. was Madamic River Rest Area which got 70 votes, and the number two choice was Madamic Picnic Park with 17 votes. Wow. So, um, I like that alliteration stuff, you know? <laughs> Madamic Picnic Park. And the River Rest area. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you get the microphone, but I'm wearing a mask, so I'm not popping my peas. <laughs> um, okay, so it doesn't... We don't know who is going to bring this choice to the select board. Well, maybe the select board member that we have in the conservation but commission. That's a logical choice. Yeah. All, in, all in favor of Will. I, I move that I move that Will present this. I second the all in favor. Okay. I just let them know that we're um, we want to give it an official name so we can have an official sign, and. Hopefully, people will notice how well it's being maintained, mm -hmm. right? And uh, that sort of thing. Okay. And then that—that's the prelude to us having the pocket parks. You know, the information that we're going to share with the public about pocket parks. Okay. Well, that brings us to the next item on the agenda, which um, are my attempts to rep visually represent the signs that I had in mind that I was talking about last time. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, what you get is the proportion out of these. You get the proportion and the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also the same design that I'm going to propose to the select board for Welcome to Waldeboro signs. Unfortunately, the, the colors came out fine and the proportions came out fine. The border that I had on there didn't come out and the font didn't make it. It's a mm -hmm. apparently the the translation from my version of Word to mm -hmm. the version of Word that Max is using. Um, this one is not just the font? looked at the font and said, now nah, we're going with Arial. So you yep. like this one? Well, that's Times New Roman. This, The other two are Arial, but the one that I had was... It was different. I think it was Algerian, and awesome. it's got a lot more dimension to it. From a distance, it still looks like block lettering, so it's not visually... You know, too complicated, but up close, you know, when you're a couple of cars car lengths away, it would have more of an antique, a um, little, little less clinical, more, a little bit more of a, you know, yeah, a, an elite feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it would be a more attractive for the sign. Um, so then my sketch is what the sign would look like behind. Yep. Uh, proposed uh, raised flower bed. Um, and then I had details in the email about proportions. I should have printed that out so that I could refer to it, but I did not. Um, anyway, so there's, I, I don't think that there's necessarily a voting issue here. I don't think we're at a stage yet where we need to approve something specific. 
Um, but this is just to get kind of people thinking mm -hmm. around. We, we could get a consensus of what we like most. Yeah, we, I'll, I'll try to send, uh, what, if you look at your email, the attachments via email, you might have avoid the translation issue and be able to see the font that I had. Okay. Now, I'm not, I did look at it. I'm not recommending that particular part. font, but that's kind of more the idea, expresses the idea of what I had in mind than these, which are pretty plain. Did you just send that email out today? No, uh, yesterday, I think. Oh, I haven't seen it. Okay, so. so I'll get it to you. Um, but I think the one thing that we should think about is making sure that we've got um, a consistency in the signage from site to site. Sure. So that's why, you know, the basic concept is kind of, it's kind of crucial to be thinking about whether that's the way we want to go or not. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, a, um, the ratio of the sign would be um, twice as wide as it is tall. We could go a little bit more low profile and, you know, instead of like six by three, six by two and a half, uh -huh. that, that looks better. You need a professional drafts person to come up with these representations, I guess. <laughs> um, but the, the basic idea is to have the sign like about six inches behind the top of the, the box bed and then about six inches above it. Um, and not quite as wide as the bed itself, which would allow for um, some large plants. I use daylilies here to kind of help frame the base of the sign. And then, um, you know, kind of soften the corner, mm -hmm. you know, from a design perspective. Um, and one thing that I thought of while I was working on this was that if if the sign if the sign planter box arrangement is only going to be facing one way, that means that the back of it will be blank mm -hmm. and a graffiti magnet. <laughs> so, fortunately, I know a, a local organization that can donate a whole bunch of forsythia for free. <laughs> Cover the back of it. Finding way. You know, seriously, I built this whole thing around being able it. to use up for some forsythia. Uh, I'm kidding. No. Um, but no, a forsythia behind it, yeah. you know, behind the sign close up to the back mm -hmm. would just... Make it harder for anyone to mess harder. with it. Yeah, it just make tagging more, <laughs> more trouble than it's worth. And, what about a double-sided sign? Well, uh, there wouldn't necessarily be... Maybe for the welcome to Waldeboro signs, you know, welcome to Waldeboro. Thank you for buying your gas here <laughs> uh, on your way to Camden. Um, Maybe Rockland. <laughs> yeah, or Rockland, whatever. Um, but yeah, unless we wanted to try to center something at the rest area. Um, <coughs> I'm just me. saying. It's equally good to have someone coming off Route 1 to see it, as well as somebody coming up 32. Yeah, well, yeah, I was thinking we could do kind of one at each end. Oh, okay. You know, um, Okay. because they're not expensive. I mean, you know, you're talking... Yeah, because I guess you don't want to see the sign after you've already driven by it. Right. If you, if you see the sign, then you can decide to stop there if you want to. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the planter boxes... You know, basically two by twelve lumber, um, and fill. The sign itself is basically a sheet of plywood painted. You know, and and then we can dress it up with some like standard house molding that goes around doorways and paint that, and to make it look a little bit cooler, and a couple of four by fours to hold it up. Um, so you know, we can if we. If we end up deciding on that kind of relatively inexpensive design, well done, mm -hmm. um, then we can we can probably afford to put these in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and what about the lettering? Would you get stencils, or would you? Well, I don't know. We could. Or? 
we that's definitely a detail we need to discuss. I we could do stencils, we could do it ourselves, which would cut the cost, or we could have them professionally painted, especially if it's a mm -hmm. um, a font that we can't get a stencil for. Um, so I'm thinking there are sign company you know, Voss Sign is the one that did the mm -hmm. um, the quarry sign and the uh, Dutch Neck yeah. Marine Park sign and those ones. Mm -hmm. um, the signs in Bremen that you see by the um, Hay Farm Recreation Area. Those were done by prisoners for a very little amount of money. Hmm. Um, and Bremen tends to use them to clean up the uh, Bremen townhouse, and they've used them a number of different ways. Um, I don't know what their contacts are or whatever, but obviously we can get in touch with them and find out who the contacts are. But they do signage very inexpensively. You have to supply all the materials or whatever, mm -hmm. and then maybe you go out and buy stenciling, or maybe you can special order certain fonts stenciling. Yeah. Could be. Different sizes. Um, but well, we, it, like I said, the, the specific font that I was using was more to illustrate the principle of something fancier. Mm -hmm. um, I think this kind of does, too. Well, that's Times New Roman, which is kind of, that's kind of standard. It's ordinary, yeah. Yeah, it's but kind it of. But it looks interesting from, you know, and it's simple and plain. You can easily yeah. read it from a distance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that would be kind of the backup because everybody has Times New Roman. Right. But what we can do is maybe contact um, uh, a couple of different places that could could you know paint the signs for us, mm -hmm. and then see what fonts they have because mm -hmm. they may have some standards that right are you know something that would be a little bit fancier than Times New Roman, mm -hmm. but not yeah, and they would be, still visible from a distance. I was going to say they'd still, be tuned in to making sure their signs are visible. Yeah. Allegedly. So, which kind of back back up a little bit here. So I've got two two basic color schemes. Both of them are blue and gold. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which you know I'm I'm not necessarily uh, you know pounding the table for that combination. Although it would be nice because it's the school colors. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the dark background with the yellow lettering. Yeah, the, the dark background with the yellow lettering, I think, is is nicer looking. It's mm -hmm. a little more dignified. On the other hand, the yellow background with the blue lettering is more, much more visible from a distance. Yeah, what's interesting, too, it would be visible from a distance because the dark does show up. But I was told at one time when I was doing signage that older people can't see yellow. or they, they oh. Yellow disappears to them. So if the yellow disappears, if it's the background, that's fine. Yeah. But if yellow disappears, I guess if it's on a dark background, it's not going to disappear. So well, it's going to disappear. Is it going to look white? It may look white. Okay. Well, I, that's I'm good not with a big deal. Too. Yeah. Um, but just someone told me that I don't, I don't. I'm old and I still see yellow, so I don't. Yeah. Know. <laughs> I don't know what the story is. Yeah. Are we going to uh, do yellow or gold? Well. That's gold well, could be. Yeah. Because that's like this then it'd be more, would look really classy with actual with gold. gold lettering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we were going to do yellow, yellow, this would probably be more readable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want gold lettering, this would be very. And readable, I think we should try to pick. Reflect a lot of light. Yeah, and if we're trying to pick the colors of the um, Madomic teams, then yeah. we should go to their versions of the color, you know, yeah. their, okay. their darkness, their lightness. Yeah, it's their, probably, yeah, I, I see it as kind of a gold yellow, but I went to the University of Michigan, so basically the same colors, which oh. they called maize and blue. So, <laughs> okay. uh, so maize is like corn yellow, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, sweet corn yellow. Or, so we're thinking more yellow. Not too well, no, I mean, it's it's okay. a golden yellow, but okay. I mean, think, think sweet corn, you know, dark sweet corn, yeah. you know, not, not necessarily the butter and sugar. I think right, we just but, look at the uniforms they have in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're in the yeah. paper every week. So. Or a University of Michigan game. Um, <laughs> if you must. <laughs> if you must. I mean, if you have to. Um, so I think I think that covers most of it. I'm going to ask you to refer back to the email so that, okay. you know, just in case I missed okay. anything, in case I skipped anything. Okay. Um, and again, um, Will, when you uh, talk to the select board about naming the picnic area, um, you could also show them these, um, saying we're, we're, we're going over what kind of signage we might have and what we might choose and just, you know, if, and, and maybe ask if they want input on that. Well, also, 
they may want yeah. to say we need to approve it, whatever it is. Yeah. Also, make the uh, make sure that you make the point that because I had, you know, Abden had tasked me. Well, the board had tasked me to come up with a design for welcome to Waldegrove signs, new to replace the planters that we have. So this kind of does both of those things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And again, what I'd be shooting for is some sort of consistency mm -hmm. with municipal signage. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you've got a welcome to Waldeboro, say, on the corner across from Moody's by the smoke shop at the one end, and then at the other end by, on the park and ride, the little island there, the little divider between the street and the parking lot. Um, and then all of the areas around town. Mm -hmm. The rest area, Elm Street, West Main, the town landing, you have some smaller version, of version that. maybe of that, same sign. that, but you know, with the consistent colors and lettering so that people know, oh, you know, this relates to that, to that, to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, cool. All right. So that's, that's my suggestion. Um, to sum up, I guess, what we need to do next with this is... Wait for talk, to the, talk to the select board. You know, this is the way we're thinking. This is the way we're thinking of going with signage and planters. Um, and then at some point, we need to get into the details about costs. Mm -hmm. We need to probably go to each site and figure out what dimension would look good because the you know, the planter boxes can be larger and smaller too, as long as they're in proportion to the sign. Um, taller or lower, maybe taller if you're if you're looking at it from you know it's if it's a little below grade you might want the box everything raised a little bit so mm -hmm. the box would have to be deeper you know that kind of right. thing. Yeah. Um, for Elm Street, whatever we end up naming that, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's there is a spot there if anybody wants to go after the meeting and take a look quick look. Just to see what it, have you been over there to see what it looks like now? I've driven by, but I didn't slow down. Okay. Or anything. Would, would everybody? I, I would everybody? Down, I checked it out. Would everybody have just like five minutes to to go over there just to take a look? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right, and then I can point out the spot where I'm thinking. So yeah. that gives you more of a, a less of an abstract. Well, where is this going to go? You know, give you an example of what I what so I would think. Close up for. the work that they did. It's yeah, exciting. and yeah, we can. That's good. The huge amount of work that was done over there. It's just like night and day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put for notes, will, select board, and then is there any other thing we can do to advance this? You want to try to get, get... get the approval of the select board for the name and their recommendation for the signage. Okay, well. Yeah, I mean, it, nothing written in stone or painted on plywood yet. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, and then we can investigate um, the cost of doing it different ways, whatever. Okay. So we have All some. Right. So that'll that'll be can, an agenda item for next meeting. Right. So we can decide, um, you know, which way will we go. Okay. So everybody have your thoughts together for that for yeah. October. Maybe Steve, between you and I, we can investigate the different signage. I can get hold of some things we paid for Voss. I can find out from the Bremen um, okay. Conservation Commission how they got hold of the people to do their signage and what it costs. And you can determine what it would cost if we did it ourselves. Obviously, okay. we might, we'd have to buy stencils and consider the cost of the, the flower bed and the, um, and the sign it, the plywood for the sign and the paint. Just consider it so that we'll have something to compare it with. Okay. Even if you're providing it all for free. <laughs> Okay, so um, that takes care of 4.1 and 4.2, 4.3, Town Forest. Max, you have something to report on the Woolly Adelgid uh, treatment from arborists on costs? So I was able to speak with um, someone who is licensed by the state to treat uh, invasive species areas, and the price that I got 
there are three different methods that people use. There's drunk injections, soil injections, and spraying. Spraying was something that was suggested that we don't do just because we have very tall trees and so they might not accurately get all of it. So, and that's maybe $500 for 150 gallons for use. So that's probably gonna be way outside the budget at that point. The two suggestions I gave were trunk injections, which are a bit new to the woolly beetles. Uh, it's as it sounds, they take the trunk of the tree and they just inject the pesticide into the, the tree itself and then it goes up. And that is gonna be $9 per inch of diameter. Oh my goodness. The trunk diameter. Oh, trunk diameter. Oh yeah, I probably should have said that. Trunk <laughs> diameter. Okay. Um, and then the second option, which is inject soil injections. So as it applies, they get the pesticide into the soil and it again goes up. Um, and that's done a lot more often for invasive species. Uh, that came at a total of estimate $50 per tree. And that's assuming you worked it into the uh, fertilizer that you're putting along the tree. So I don't know how many trees we were going to do. Right. That's the, the big thing. And I don't know how uh, large in diameter the trees are. If it's soil, I mean, that's probably, assuming the soil is the like base thing to go on, it's not as expensive as it sounds, but perhaps there are a lot more trees than I knew. Of. Well, I think Joan was suggesting that we um, go for the younger trees, that the oldest of the old, although it is the ancient hemlock grove, that they may be too hard to save. It might be better to save the younger trees. Now, I don't know what diversity of age that exists in that ancient hemlock grove, but they must not all be ancient. <laughs> no. And so I, I think what we'd have to do is survey the trees and get a, some idea, maybe ask Joan for her help. And, well, uh, and the person who I spoke to who would be doing this, they said they don't mind coming out to Walsboro to check the, the trees. Oh, that would be good. Um, though they are booked for the whole month, so that, that would be taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at some point we need to get an appointment okay. well, yeah. with them to, to come out and then someone here who knows specifically what we're looking at trying to save, we'll have to meet with them on mm -hmm. site and take them through it. Question I had is with the soil injection, um, I presume that that's something that they would do. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So they know they know where in the soil to put that. Generally, with what I what little I've done with with woody ornamentals, generally things like that are are put in the, not close to the trunk, but in, in the drip, drip line. line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but they will know that. Mm -hmm. So that was on my mind and I had to blurt it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so any other comments mm -hmm. on? I would say if we could get an, an appointment with them and get Joan Ray out at the same time, mm -hmm. that would be a good interface because she would be able to point to things and she knows She's been there to recognize the woolly adelgid and where they are. Yeah. And they could maybe help see where the infestation is the worst and make some decisions. And maybe even. And, and give us a count. What about. A count also, the size. Also, in addition, maybe Janet McMahon. She'd be nice. I don't know if you could get, if you could coordinate that many people getting together at the well, same that's time. that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> they're all busy people. Okay. Well, i um... But we should do what the best we can. I mean, if, yeah, if we I'll, could get I'll Janet get, there too, that'd be great. I'll get Janet a, an email. I'll poke her over email and see what. And maybe if, if you could send an email to to Joan and Janet, mm -hmm. saying, and if Max could give us the name of this company. Well, first. that was just one person that I got a call back from. Okay. And they're not really local. There's a few people who I called in like Food Bay and Knox County, and I'm waiting to hear back from them. This everything that I just said tonight was from one, one just one. So there might be someone who could come out in two weeks. 
and then but they haven't gotten back to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a tough year for any kind of contractors getting back to you. Oh, uh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll just have to take that as it comes via email. And maybe if we could get uh, Joan and Janet just to go out there and help us get an, a feel for the count, then anybody we talk to will have more information to be able to share with them. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, maybe we that's, should go maybe for that's that first. Regardless of whether whether we actually have, you know, a contractor on site, maybe just get getting Joan together in. with Joan and or Janet. Yep. Um, and one of us, you know, just to, whether to Max can, or can give you, I, I saw you when you were on the phone, you were asking me how many trees, how tall are they, you know, how big and what the tree, I think that was more just for the spring question. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but still, we could, we could get more exact numbers for you right. in case another contractor happens to call. Yeah. And says, I'll fly over and they'll spray them. Yeah. <laughs> Now, spraying is not that cool because it leaves things on the surface. And so we want people to be using the town force and going through the town force. Yeah. And if, if there's some something left on the surface, that's not really what no. we want to do here, I don't think. And it's, it's horrible enough that we have to use pesticides. Right. So. Yeah. Who's this other person, McMahon? Who is that? Janet McMahon. She's a uh, she's... local ecologist. She right. often goes with Barry Brasilla, and they do... Um, Whenever the land trust used to uh, get new land in a preserve or an easement, they would go out and do a grid walk and identify what exists in nature in that place. You know, if there were some, they found a fluorescent fern or something on um, the Farlow property, and they they identify the kinds of trees. They did um, Quarry Hill. The the management plan by Quarry Hill is done by Janet McMahon. And she also wrote something about the town forest, if, as I recall. Yes, yeah, a natural. Oh, the town forest was um, one of the select board members many years ago wanted to get in um, a, a logger to log the town forest. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Janet McMahon wrote a letter saying why that wasn't a good idea, because it was an ancient hemlock grove, and it's very narrow, and the setback is thirty feet on either side. If you if you don't encroach. 30 feet on either side, <laughs> you're basically clearing the path that we walk. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not worth it to, um, to do that. But um, she, she wrote a, a very well-written letter that explained what was in there, what the value of it is, because she does nature surveys. She does kind of the manage, you know, identifies what conservation um, things exist or what things exist that should be conserved in a particular Part of and she's, the land. she's also one of the original organizers of the Waldo Theater restoration. So. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. But she's done that kind of a survey for all the land trusts in the area. Damers got a river association. When they were new, they used her to do their natural inventory. It's called a, a natural inventory for the property. It's an inventory of what exists in nature. We need more of those. Okay, I, I, so, I'm hesitant to move forward with that to until we hear from Leslie too, where she's kind of been tackling that mm -hmm. the woolly thing. Okay, and I think she should really, you know, have a say on how we go about that. Okay, so maybe we should um, wait and have her contact Joan and Janet and I get think together. So. Yeah, okay. that would be the best. All right, that sounds good. That's kind of been her. her yeah, passion okay, that's true. Board, I so. completely okay. agree with that. We can 100%. accept that. Okay, so and we can give her the contact information that she yeah, may need. Yeah, because she's already been in contact with yeah, Janet. I have Janet's email. So, um, okay, so that takes us to new business, uh, property updates, um, George Gould Trail. George Gould Trail. It's not in terrible shape. Okay, I wasn't sure. It's it, I mean, same but, with the trees that are down. Yeah. There, there are two trees that are still a problem. Mm -hmm. They're near the field that sits off of Route 1. Mm -hmm. um, there's a small one that's down, and then another one that's huge that split in three different directions. Oh, that's the one that we saw, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like it just gave, gave up, up on yeah. life. It, 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 it had a huge collapsed. hole in the center, and it was quite a yeah. large tree. So that one is covering two parts of the trail. One part of it isn't a problem. Should probably still be cut up. Um, my husband and I cleared 
every branch and other small tree that's down, those are gone. The only thing left are just the, the big ones. The big ones. That we, we only have a chainsaw with a blade on it that's like that long. <laughs> so we didn't go there. Okay. Um, the kiosk is in good shape. The markers definitely need to be repainted. Mm -hmm. Both the white flashes that are covering the tree roots that one could trip on and the blue markers all, all need to be redone. Mm -hmm. You can see them if you're really looking for them, but my kids managed to get off trail. Yeah, so. and yeah, you don't want to lose people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's um, the second boardwalk has one board on it the board to the right needs to be replaced. The other ones are in pretty good shape. I could see an older person having a hard time crossing the first boardwalk just because there's a lot of mud mm -hmm. and rocks that are spaced kind of far apart mm -hmm. to hop across to get to the boardwalk. So I could see those rocks being a problem for some people. Mm -hmm. I think if we were to just find some more rocks mm -hmm. that way the steps weren't so large it would be could more easily traversed could we extend the boardwalk or we could do something like right. that mm -hmm. whatever would be easier i was kind right. of looking around at what they had right there mm -hmm. and there were more rocks in the stream my husband wanted to go get and fix it immediately and I was like, oh, let's, let's wait that's what I and if we had to carry something in we want to carry something in that isn't that hard to carry <laughs> right right so yeah that's why he was looking at the other rocks in the neighborhood um rocks are cheap <laughs> they are they're very affordable uh, <laughs> i like rocks yeah me too um, as far as invasive species, I didn't find any insects, you know, I didn't look real hard, but I didn't see any damage or anything like that, that we needed to be concerned of. There's a lot of multiflora rose oh, that's right. starting to encroach on the path though. Mm -hmm. So those that's might right. need to be attacked a little bit. Mm -hmm. We're never going to get rid of them. They're mm -hmm. here. Right. Um, how about, um, wild barberry? Yeah, you see There's that There's gotta be some. Yeah. Okay. I didn't make any note of any, mm -hmm. but you, you I might not notice them as much until they actually get the berries give ripened. Give them up. another month or two. Yeah, yeah then you then you'd see them ripened. Yeah, if I wasn't looking specifically for it. Um, yeah. I'd be shocked if it wasn't there. Yeah, yeah they're everywhere. The way it is. Poison ivy. Probably. I'm one of those people that can walk right through poison ivy and survive it. Okay. I, I will look for poison ivy. I yeah. didn't even think to check. I haven't for seen it. it on the trail but, in the but past, I, but well, I I would expect to find that where it gets at least some sun. Yeah, yeah, like, around, like the, around, around the sign, around the storage edges, places, or mm -hmm. um, like by the entrance. Yeah, you know, or mm -hmm. any any place that it, yeah. you know, you, yeah, the edges of the nothing stood out. I'm sure there's some there that we can find. <laughs> it's like at like at the ed, on the edge of the woods here. Yep. Yep. You know. Yep. Okay. Um, but the rose is what really stood out to me. We mm -hmm. we did cut some back so we could get through the trail in some areas because it had already started to grow into it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. I, we we, we goes dug everywhere. up a few that had, you know how they they touch down and then yeah. they yeah, spread they, those they roots. Put the roots down they, they were starting to do that in the trail, so we dug those out. Oh, good. Um, it didn't look like the trail was getting a whole lot of foot traffic. There was yeah. no trash, which good. surprised me because That's I expected good. to find some trash. Um, other than the trees, it's in pretty good shape. There is a, one muddy spot that we might, I'd like to revisit it in the spring to just see I'd like to see it, it in the worst time of year, mm -hmm. you know, just to see how muddy it does get. Yeah. We've been getting a lot of rain right now, so I'm not yeah. sure that it's a problem year round. But there was this one other area without a boardwalk that I thought, maybe, Could maybe need we need a boardwalk here. But mm -hmm. it's been a little bit wet lately, so. Okay. Well, I copied it for you guys because one of the things that I was going to do was get in touch with the uh, trail crew for the Mid Coast Conservancy the uh, Madomic Valley area mm -hmm. and they have a really good trail crew and they get together every Wednesday and they go off they have a, a preset idea of what they're going to do and what and this Wednesday they called it off because they didn't have anything to do oh my goodness 
So I thought, finally, I get all the emails. And so finally I thought, oh, a break in their action. So I didn't want to you know, impose on them too, while they were real busy. So I sent an email out today and I copied it to you guys. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. And um, I asked them if it would be possible for them because they've offered to help us. And they like, um, they like to partner with other organizations and things to do good things around the town, whatever. And um, so I asked him, I asked Charlie, the head of this trail crew, if he'd find time and when he could maybe meet with one of us and we'd actually walk the trail and he could tell us um, what things he thinks they can take care of, what oh, things he wants us to do. or uh, And he does so much with the trails, he'd be able to give us advice about more boardwalk or yeah. using rocks or, you know, because they maintain a lot of trails around here. Yeah. So um, so I sent the email out today and um, hopefully I'll hear back and I hope he replies to us all so that we all Great. get the information, but I'll share with you at some point um, if there's a time when he can get together, I'll put it out to anyone else that wants to join us. Perfect, thank you. But if you have all this, now, you've been out there, so you know you have a first-hand information yeah. of how the trail is. Oh, yeah. That'll help. Okay. Um, Dutch Neck. Dutch Neck, yeah. So I was out there, and I did finish marking the trail. And I marked it around. There's a big rock, and got closer to the stone wall, and I think I followed. Every now and then, I found a very old yellow ribbon or something from the past. So I think I followed the trail that Edward wanted us to to be on. And um, I marked it, but I didn't clear it all. There's places where you have to step over a, a down tree or there's places where, you know, this brush is growing into the area and you can see the mark on the tree, but it really needs to be cleaned up and cleared quite a bit. And I was hoping that we might consider doing that with volunteers, like putting something in the paper or something on Facebook on our website. Um, if we can set a date and actually schedule it and say anyone that wants to join us, bring your clippers and your rake or whatever, and uh, come join us. So that's the way I like to do it. Okay. Um, we there was some um, some bottles. I I picked up some trash there, and there was a mattress there, and it is has been removed. There was a tree that was down that's sort of on the way to the picnic table in the south end of the parking lot. And um, it's still down. You can maneuver around it. You can go around it, whatever. But it does have limbs sticking up, and so it's kind of somewhat hazardous. I'd like to see us cut at least cut the limbs that are sticking up off and maybe cut it and move it out of the way a little bit. Is, is the picnic table you're talking about, is this the one that's kind of on the road to the, to the left of the road? No, this is, is the parking thing? lot area. If you go all the oh. way into the parking lot where we okay, park the one, our cars. Right. Okay, it's the one yep. back there. Okay. Near the rocks with the little... Well, maybe I yeah. can run over there with my sawzall. Right. And um, and there were a bunch of small items. I picked up some plastic bags, and thank goodness I had gloves, you know. <laughs> and, um, and then I just, um, the other trails I didn't really look at closely. We had marked the trail going out to the rope swing um, that was there, and that was, it was in good condition, and it looked like it had been, it'd been traveled on a few times, so it, it, it was in Good condition. That's the one where we cut the cable, the oh, cable right. that was going between the trees. So we cut that, and so I didn't really go on those trails too much. But if we have volunteers there, we can say, and anybody that wants to just take these, this trail and this trail, let us know if it needs any work. That would be helpful. But we could set a date sometime. It's getting to the time of year where we, it, it's a good weather to do these kinds of things. Oh yeah, that's. But um, you have to kind of pick, pick and choose your time. Yeah, it's not. It's we, not ninety and seventy-five percent humidity. So right. yeah, I'm I'm out there. That's why I'm tired. I'm out there a lot now. <laughs> and I don't know if we want to kind of think about a date now, but we could always just um, we could pick a day and have a rain date, something to that effect. So, and I may want to wait until we have Leslie to bounce things off of too, because she might have time to offer. Yeah. And uh, I know I'm available pretty much any time, but. You know, Will and Leslie and other people who actually work yeah, just, have it, schedules that they have to work around. Well, it, Saturdays are the best day for me. Yeah, for I, me, it's basically shoot me an email when you're going to be there, and I'll show up. Mm -hmm. Show up because I mm -hmm. I don't have much of a schedule. Yeah, me either. <laughs> so, I guess we could. Um, I'd like to have it happen in September, the clearing of the Dutch Neck trails. We could have it happen sometime in September. So I guess we can email 
Oh, yeah, oh. Saturday's probably the best day for me, though, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you know, the weekend day. I can do every other Sunday, but then you have to worry about the other. Which part. other is it? But, yeah, <laughs> exactly, but every Saturday. Yeah, Sunday, is. Sunday mornings are probably okay, too. Mm -hmm. well, I'll look at the calendar and shoot something out to everybody and see okay. what works, and then see if Leslie agrees that we could invite the public to join us or whether she thinks we should clear it up first ourselves. I think we can, I think we're at a point where we could invite the public to join us mm. and then get people to know that it's there. And you never know, there may be a bunch of people on Dutch Neck that show up. Yeah, maybe. It's their neck of the woods. <laughs> I can think of a couple of people that might. And then I've got the Neighbors report to give to Dutch Leslie, one. but like, we'll give it to her whenever we can. Yep. All right. Um, Corey Hill. Corey Hill. Yep, it was fairly clean. We picked up stuff a few times, beer cans, a lot of those. Um, but the trash really wasn't that hasn't been that bad, so sure. that's a good thing. Um, kind of improving a little bit. Yeah, you? it was nice. I mean, we we did pull that motorcycle out at the beginning. Yeah. Of oh yeah, gosh, that was, that was <laughs> insane. Really that, really get any worse that did you find out who did that? I don't know if the Still police have know. or not, oh, but. Geez. And it was all over Facebook and there was a lot of names mentioned. I'm sure they followed up. <laughs> well, if that beca oh, starts really? becoming a, yeah. if, if that starts becoming a monthly occurrence, we have a problem. Right. But, you know. <laughs> right. It was one, you know, and, and it didn't like go completely in the water. It was kind of like got it over the edge and it was too heavy to get back. And so it le leaked a little <laughs> gas, not much at all. Good. Um, and no oil. So yes. the oil was all intact. So that was a good thing. Yeah. Public works hauled it out and got rid of it. Good um, Lord. But yeah, I don't like to see that kind of thing up there because, you know, it's a really nice spot. And mm. If that was a continuous occurrence, I mean, you'd have to think, like, and close it down. I know. Yeah. That'd be it's awful. It's not worth, you know, permanently damaging that piece of water or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, But, uh, yeah, everything looks good up there. It's, you know, there's a lot of people still going there, and I think that helps keep the trash down. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yep. I've seen groups of people up there sitting in their lawn chair and with the kids were swimming in the quarry and that's great. It is. Though I have learned that teenagers are surprisingly responsive to you. If you ask them to swim out to the middle of the quarry for a bottle, they'll they'll do it. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> well, I guess that was a challenge more than a Maybe. favor. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. Couldn't believe it. Cool. I like to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, quick with the the rest area. Now we're calling it Madamic River Rest Area, officially mm -hmm. on the agenda. Okay. Um, I haven't been over there a lot. Um, Carol and I started working a new bed um, that's kind of at the request of the guys who mow over there. You know where the wire comes down from mm -hmm. the pole. You know the support wire. Apparently that's a pain, in, and I can see that, a pain in the butt to mow around. And we just happen to have a bunch of daylilies that we can throw in there. So we started clearing a bed around the base of the of the okay. wire, and uh, it started getting rainy, and then she got busy with personal things, and I got busy with home stuff, so we haven't made a lot of progress on that since then. Um, but I've been over there checking on things at least briefly a couple of times over the past month, uh, you know, weeding the, the new flower bed and whatnot. And I haven't seen a whole lot of trash over there. Although someone on uh, one of the enhancing Waldebro or something uh, was saying that was complaining about all the trash over there yeah. uh, just within the past couple of days. So, you know, I wasn't there. Maybe I missed something, but, you know, I, but in, in general, other than other than the poison ivy, I think it's in, in pretty fair shape, at least. You know, it, nothing nothing has changed for the worse. Um, the picnic tables all seem to be in decent shape, although the gravel bases, a lot of the boards are, are loose and you know, there there could be some replacement there and maybe a, a little spray on the gravel with the vinegar up some salt solution to take down some of the weeds that are growing up through the gravel. Um, the Pine Street Landing, um, 
uh, Justin apparently went through with a weed whacker and took down all of the tall weeds that are in the riprap there, just on his own, unprompted, just got into it. Um, and our former member, Larry mm -hmm. Wellman, Jr., um, he and his wife, they lived right across the street from the landing. So they started going down there with their kids in the strollers. And, and while they're down there, they, they're picking up the trash. So I have not seen, I, I've seen very, very little trash down there when I've gone to, to uh, water the, the flower pots. Um, I thought Larry moved. No, I think they were going to, but they haven't yet. So oh. um, can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't blame me. Um, the project that Carol and I were working on, well, mostly me, of moving back the the rocks between the riprap stones be, that are between the boulders where the flower pots sit. Um, I've got three of those gaps, flower pot gaps, cleared with a little wall of riprap behind them and then um, covered the bear, weeded everything, I mean, thoroughly, and then covered with newspaper and cardboard and probably this much in wood chips. Can you come over uh, to my house? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It takes, You're good at it, takes a, it takes a good two and a half hours just to do one gap, and that's after we went through and weeded them all in the first place. Um, and so far, and I was I was concerned because on the slope, the water runs down into the wood chips, and I was concerned about them washing away. But we've had we had a couple of very heavy rains, rains okay. since I kind of okay. I, I did those three, and then I kind of stopped because I was concerned about that. Um, and they've held up. But and the wood chips have held up. However, I think I mentioned at the last meeting that. At some point down the road, I was going to put some more of a solid platform yeah, under can. the pots because yep. one of the problems we've always had with the pots there is getting them level with all the jumble of riprap. You know, it's been kind of try to set the pot down and it's like this, pull it off, try to make a little platform out of the riprap and then set it back down and then shim it, you know. Um, so they're, they're much more level on those wood chips, but the wood chips are soft mm. and so they keep falling over. Mm. You know, oh. they get, especially the, at the stage they're not, they are now because the begonias, the, those heavy. big red begonias are making them top heavy if they, if they get even a little bit dry. So I'm gonna have to move up my schedule and I'll probably experiment with, you know, chunk of two by 12. Um, or uh, maybe some some concrete bricks, Something that, you know, the twelve inch concrete bricks. Just nestle surface. those down in there, level them, and then then next spring we can just set the pots on those and not have to worry about leveling the pots whenever they're ready to go. Boom, you know, they're down. And... <laughs> okay, um, and I guess there's a new bench down there. I haven't gone down to see it. Oh, I you, yep. yep, okay, so cool. that, that's pretty well anchored down there. Mm. Yeah, it's on, I mean, they just... It's on a slab, right? Yeah, it's on a slab. Okay. Yeah. And there's still so, the two picnic tables, and now there's a bench also? Yep, there's cool. a bench facing downriver. Oh, how nice. It's actually a spot for three other ones, okay. and I know there's another one coming. Good. Oh, so cool. This this was a Feltis, Roger Feltis memorial bench. Right, okay. The next one is a memorial bench for Dr. Flanagan, oh, cool. his wife. She got permission to put it there, so okay. Oh, it looks good. Adds to the aesthetic of it. Yeah, plus uh, people will use it. You know, yeah. people will go there and enjoy. It. And I've seen people there bringing their lawn furniture and sitting in the sun reading a book. So yeah. I mean, yeah, it's getting cool. a lot of it's getting a lot of visitation now from you know people just going there to chill. Yeah, which is which is great. Yeah, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, so and that that you may know, also people have, to use it be keeping the trash down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, when people start showing up, responsible people show up, then there's no room for the, you know. Mm. Yeah, the vandals kind of go, The well, vandalism. You know, I'm not yeah. going there, I'll get caught. Right. <laughs> okay, so that's that's my update. Um, and we'll, 
we kind of covered a lot of ground with the town forest. Um, so, you know, Leslie can can add once she sees the minutes, I guess. We can do that via email. Um, Elm Street Pocket Park. Um, I, I think we should kind of start throwing via email, throwing suggestions at each other for a while. Uh, Leslie had on here um, the okay. question, do we want to put our top suggestions into a survey? Uh, on Facebook, like L wives look out. Yeah. Well, I think, I, yeah, I think we, I think like we need out. to kind of throw out some more suggestions there among us. Okay. Um, first, but I, I'm not sure that it's complete enough. You know, from a to to really put that to the, to the public. No. no. Not yeah. Yet. Okay. Yeah. So I I would I I I think we should do that. What we did with the rest area, but. We, later after we share people. amongst ourselves then we decide the ones that we want to present if we do want to do a survey or how we yeah. want to handle that one and we can yeah. just kind of keep a casual eye on mm -hmm. facebook like what's it going to be called or what's it you know what people start referring to it as mm -hmm. um once they get used to seeing it you know i mean I'm, I'm sure that there are a lot of people that have seen the backhoe there but and wondered what was going on mm -hmm. but once that's out of there and it's it starts to settle in and get cleaned up you know what people notice about it is going to probably generate some ideas for names mm -hmm. you know so okay um all right work needed do we need to organize a work day i don't I don't think that there's that much to do other than a little detailing. I mean, but based on driving by today. Yeah, no, really. No, I mean. Uh, we uh, put loam down today and seeded it. Okay. And then putting gravel down tomorrow to make a little parking area. Cool. So, uh, and the picnic table's already been constructed for it. Wow. I so, saw that. Yeah, I saw that on the Facebook. That was yeah. cool. Excellent. So, we're out of the game on that one. Yeah. But yeah, there's not really anything to that we okay. can do there. All right, yeah, probably the only thing that, from the Garden Club perspective at this point, is kind of, again, wait and see how it looks, how it, you know, grows up. Um, and then at some point, and if we if we can get this done this fall, it would be great. Um, but uh, get that row of Forsythia for again. Forsythia along the property line, um, just because they'll oh, look, between the house and the uh, yeah be, between the house and the and the nice idea whatever we're That's calling it, um, just to give her some yeah privacy you know some privacy, and because it'll look good in the spring they'll bloom mm -hmm. you know they'll yeah. be yellow and that'll be something you know that bright yellow is something that people haven't seen yet mm -hmm. you know to brighten up the area so mm -hmm. yeah and that's. I mean, that's not a huge thing. It's just if we can get some, you know, like a a berm of of loam and compost, you know, maybe, you know, 18 inches tall and however wide it goes as you plop it down. And, and then, you know, Carol and I can run over there with a bunch of forsythia and just toss them in there and mm -hmm. use up some of the mulch pile to mulch them in. You know that. You know if the if the if the loose soil is there as a berm, it'll take maybe a couple of hours to put in a whole bunch of uh, mm -hmm. forsythia. So. And you want to do that this fall, or? It would be. I mean, you know, not immediately, but yeah, it would probably be good to get them in. Mm -hmm. So they'll be there you know, for the spring. Early part of next month, mm -hmm. if we can, if we can. You um, mentioned it to John. So. Okay. I mean, you know, it can it can wait until spring, but it would be nice to get it done now, so it's something that we don't have to worry about. And yeah, be a good note then next spring when they bloom. Yeah, yeah, probably the sooner mention it to them, the better, because we have the equipment down there now, so okay. we need to move loam around or whatever. Yeah. Well, I did. Yeah. He and I did t discuss it. So. I, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Okay. That, but. So he he knows that it's on my mind. Yep. Yeah. For what it's worth. That my mind that is. Mm -hmm. uh, he just needs to know when. 
so yeah. as soon as possible. Well, it's it's, basic, to it's basically to his schedule. Yeah. I mean, you know, right. if he if he can conveniently get it done between now and middle of October, great. If it's going to be like, oh man, no, nah, don't worry about it. Yeah. You know. Uh, all right, so discussed there. Next meeting um, is October fifth. That's Tuesday, October 5th. Tuesday, October 5th. Okay. All right. Everybody's on board with that. Mm -hmm. okay, and I'll wait. email around because I really think we want, need to do a um, a volunteer cleanup day for Dutch Neck. Right. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. And I'll keep you guys posted if I hear back from Charlie about the uh, trail, uh, the yeah. Gold Trail. Yeah. I mean, if we could have some help cleaning those trees up. Yeah. Other than those trees, I really think my husband and I can manage that trail on our Great. own. That's know. super. That's super so to hear that. Yeah. So I love good. it. But Charlie's group, they're good with chainsaws and stuff like that and yeah. carrying boards in and yeah. stuff like that. And we're great to help with that. We just don't have yeah. the heavy equipment that's right. needed. And they've got the so. trail skills so they could recommend the best yeah. thing for this area or that area. Sure. Yep. Cool. Um, just quickly, I'll add, Leslie just told me that she's already been in contact with Joan Ray, and she's okay. already made, set up a meeting with her this month, so at oh, the good. Oh, okay. so. Now, I don't know if they want to add Janet McMahon to that. Or... That would be, yeah, Janet would just be kind of a bonus, I would think, but, you know. Like yeah, I'll, 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 find, I'll have her send an email, Leslie, mm -hmm. and what time, and yeah. see if we can schedule it. I mean, it would be kind of nice to get that connection, mm -hmm. because it, Janet's connected with a whole bunch of other Yeah. And she's had a, different a crowd background that, in this. You know. and she's yeah. she studied that. that she even uh, dated the trees in the um, ancient hemlock grove. How do you do that? Well, she dated. She um, no. Um, I forget exactly how she. I guess there was a fallen tree. Oh. And uh, she figures they're well over over two hundred years old. They were here. Civil War ish. Civil, Civil War, War time. Yeah. Wow. So they're well over two hundred years old, ancient hemlock grove. So. It's worth saving, yes. and supposedly, um, there's there's some interest that the state has in naming this a historic place. You know, it's like being historic on the National Preserve. Historic Register kind of thing. The town forest itself, or Walter? The town's forest. Really? The town forest, because uh, it's a natural, um, it's a historic natural feature mm -hmm. of our area, and there is something um, Janet would know. Um, what the details with that are, I don't know. Oh, you know, they don't put a plaque up or anything like that. But the state has a record of historic areas in the state, and I believe that the town forest is one of them. That could be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be another an added layer of protection. Yeah, and we might get Legal um, we might get different kinds of funds available because of that. Oh. Oh. So that Boss. again, I don't know the details of that. Joan might even know. Yeah. But Janet would definitely know. Okay, so it'd be she a keeps good, track of that. Reason stuff. for Leslie and Janet to, mm. to at least talk, so, you know. Yeah, you might want to give uh, Leslie uh, Janet's contact information okay. and just I say, "I'm sending it. this to you if you if you decide to include yeah. her." I think I've got a note to that effect. Okay. Send Janet McMahon's email to Leslie, and that way she can decide whether she wants to. Okay. And Will, you can fill her in on, you know, the all the stuff we talked about in terms of Janet's background and history. I will. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess what we should do is we should hang on to our paper version of the um, of our uh, okay. park report, and next month do another park report, and then Leslie's here. We can give her. She's going to keep the, all the hard copies. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. And I emailed photos and things. I should probably print them to keep it with the report. Yeah, that would make sense. And I sent some emails to everyone that copy of the report, just so you... The report form? Yeah, the report okay, form, good. so you have another copy of it. So we can print. Although, Will, you gave it to me, so I just didn't include you. <laughs> but uh, if, you need a, if you need a physical copy, just let me know, and I'll print out a group for you. Okay. Okay. 
All right, anything else anybody has to add? Anything that we missed? No, nope. any, er any errors? <laughs> no. Nope. Okay, well, uh, I move that we adjourn. Oh, we were going to meet at the uh, pocket park. Oh, right. Take okay. a look at the Elm Street. We adjourn to the pocket park, the Elm Street pocket park. Okay. All, right. okay. Okay. All in favor of adjournment?